Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. So as you guys can see, I already have my eye makeup done for the most part um, because today's video is going to be an in-depth face routine video. I know I did one of these a few months ago, but my routine has changed a little bit and I have some new products that I'm using um, that I wanted to talk to you guys about. If you hear any noise in the background, it's Olivia. She just, she doesn't stay still. She's a puppy. She just likes to play 24-7. So she's running around squeaking and eating whatever she can find. So when I started putting out these products, I did notice that a lot of the products are the same um, as my last video and actually a lot of my techniques are the same but there are a couple little tweaks that I've made and a couple little things that are different and that's why I decided to sit down and do this video anyways. I kind of want to talk to you guys more about some new products that I have been liking. It's just a few but there are a few. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I always do before I start with my foundation or any of that stuff is I prep my skin. My skin prep for the most part is pretty much the same, but I have added a couple of products. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to take the Mario Badescu Facial Spray with Aloe, Cucumber, and Green Tea. I actually prefer this one over the Rose Water one. I just feel like this one's more hydrating. I don't know why I feel like the Rose Water one, initially it feels hydrating, but after it feels like it makes your face kind of feel like muggy, if that makes sense. And I feel like this one doesn't. This one just continues to hydrate your skin. So I just spritz this over my whole face to give a nice boost of hydration to my skin. So this is a step that regardless of what skin type you have, I would recommend it. It's so important, and I talked about it in my last video, but it's so important for your skin to be hydrated so that your foundation doesn't sit on top of your skin, but you want it to absorb into your skin and look more like your skin. The next product I use to prep my face is the Pixi Glow Mist with Propolis and Argan Oil. Now, I just shook this so you can't see, but there's actually oil in this. Like You can see before you shake it that there's liquid in the bottom and like the oil floats to the top. So if you're somebody that has really oily skin, I would not recommend using this product. You probably won't like it. But if you have combination or dry skin, I would definitely recommend this. I do use this to set my face sometimes and I'll show you how, but I've recently fallen in love with this as a skin prep product. I'm sure you guys have noticed on YouTube, on Instagram, a lot of people use legitimate oil, like that Farcelli oil is really in style right now. A lot of people use oils on their skin before they start their makeup to give their skin a boost of hydration and to make their foundation look a little bit more dewy and luminous. Even though I have combination to dry skin, I don't like to put oil all over my face unless I'm extremely, extremely, extremely like excessively dry that day. So I feel like this is a happy medium because since it has like a water and it just has a little bit of argan oil in it, it gives that nice boost of hydration and that nice boost of glowiness to your skin without being overly oily. And it also feels really good on your face and it smells really good. So for actual primer, I'm still using the Too Faced Hangover Primer. You guys know I love this stuff. As I said in my last video, it's just, again, super hydrating. I think this is a really good primer for people with oily skin, for people with dry skin. I just think it's really, really, really important, regardless of what type of skin you have, to hydrate your skin before you start doing your makeup. Like I say, I say it all the time, but there's a difference between oil and water, and hydration is water. If you have oily skin, you still need to put water on your face. There is nothing Nothing more frustrating than dehydrated skin. What a lot of people tend to do is because they're oily, they'll skip out on moisturizer, they'll skip out on moisturizing products all, all together because they're scared they're gonna make their skin more oily. And what they end up doing is they end up getting dehydrated skin with oil breakouts all over. And that's when you get like patches on your skin of like dry skin with blemishes in between is what ends up happening. And that's when your makeup will just sit on top of your skin, it'll catch onto all those dry little dehydrated patches and it just doesn't look as nice as it could if we just nourished and moisturized our skin. So even if you're oily, make sure you use a moisturizer. Find one that works for you. I know this is like a little bit off topic of the skin routine, but this is a really good moisturizer, the Clinique Moisture Surge. It's a gel-like formula, so even if you're oily, it doesn't leave like this oily, greasy residue on your face. It kind of just absorbs into your skin and makes it feel like you drank, like your skin drank a glass of water. But make sure that you hydrate your skin, even if you're oily, guys. Like, I can't stress it enough. Like you need to have hydrated skin if you want your makeup to look nice. That's like the number one thing to make your makeup look nice. Take care of your skin. Hydrate your skin. Wear moisturizer. So if you're oily and you get a lot of oil break out when you wear makeup, don't be afraid to use these hydrating primers. I would definitely skip on this one because it has actual oil in it. But um, the Mario Budesco spray and the hangover primer are totally safe. You just need to make sure that you set the areas where you get oil break out really, really, really well with powder. So now that we've gone on this whole little rant about moisturizing your skin, let's start talking about foundation. So really, there has been 
three foundations that I've been reaching for, which is funny because in my last video, I had three foundations also. The number one foundation and the foundation that I'm gonna use in today's video is Armani Luminous Silk. When I first bought this foundation, I wasn't totally wild by it. The first time I used it was maybe like a year and a half ago. And I was like, it's nice, but it's nothing to write home about. But then I found myself continuously reaching for it and reaching for it. And every time I did my makeup, I always wanted to wear this. And I've just accepted the fact that this is my favorite foundation. I think this is my favorite foundation of all time. For me, it has the perfect amount of coverage. It's not too full coverage, it's not too light coverage, it doesn't look cakey on my skin, and this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite foundations to use on clients, just because the way that it absorbs into the skin is so beautiful. Even on clients that are more oily, I will use this and I'll mix it together with the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte to make it a little bit more matte, because it's just the way that this foundation sits on the skin is absolutely incredible and I've never been able to find anything that I love as much as this. So I'm gonna use this in today's video, but let me show you the other foundations I've been reaching for first. The next foundation that I've been reaching for quite a bit is my L'Oreal True Match Lumi. I used to use this foundation a lot a while ago, and I don't know why I kind of stopped using it. When I filmed my last in-depth uh, face routine, I was having a breakout issue on my face. I was breaking out a lot. My skin was just going through something. So I was sticking to more matte foundations. And that's when I think I stopped using this because I was trying to avoid more luminous, dewy foundations that would kind of accentuate my blemishes and the imperfections on my skin. But since my skin has cleared up and gotten better, knock on wood, I think we finally figured it out. Um, I've been loving this again. I've really, really, really been liking it. The only thing with this is that it does give flashbacks. So if you know you're gonna be out all night and you're gonna be taking a lot of pictures with flash photography, I would not recommend this foundation. This is one of my favorite foundations to use during the day when I'm going to the beach. Like I use this in my beach makeup routine video. I think, did I use this one or L'Oreal Pro Glow? I don't remember. But this is one of my favorite foundations. I'm always reaching for this. It's really, really, really good, but it is luminous. The other foundation and the last foundation that I'm reaching for like crazy is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. It took me a while to try this foundation out because I think the description on the box says that it's a full coverage matte foundation. And I don't know, not that I don't like full coverage matte foundations, but it just doesn't call my name. Like things that say dewy or luminous, you know. But um, this had really good reviews. So I was like, you know what, let me try it out. And I actually love it. I don't think this is full coverage. Maybe it is, but it doesn't feel like it. Like I've tried other foundations that are so much more full coverage than this, like the Kat Von D or the new Urban Decay one. Those to me are very full coverage. This is kind of like, I would say medium full coverage mixed together, but it gives the skin such a beautiful finish. Like when I know I'm gonna be taking a lot of pictures and I wanna look super flawless, this is what I've been reaching for. It's a beautiful foundation. And no, it doesn't have flashback. I did read some reviews that it gave flashback, but in my experience, I have not had any flashback with it and I actually really, really, really love it. I just hate that it's like a pour out bottle. Like I hate pour out bottles. It's so annoying. Like it's such a mess. So I'm gonna grab the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation and put a couple pumps on the back of my hand. And I'm actually still loving my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. I love this brush for foundation. I grab my mirror here. So what I do is I put some on the brush and I'll just start to put it on my face as so and start to blend it out. I have to get the mirror out of the frame. And I always put some like on my jaw, the papa area, <laughs> and bring it down my neck I don't put a lot of product on here, but I kind of use whatever's left over on the brush to kind of just feather it down and blend it so we don't have like any type of a harsh line on our skin. So once I've got that done, I'll take a wet blender, which excuse this blender, but I had six brand new blenders because I always use like two to three at one time and then I always keep backups. Olivia figured out which drawer the blenders were in and she ate all of my blenders and I have no backups. So this is the one that made it out um, the most alive. So this is what we're using today. Sorry about that. So this is a wet Real Technique sponge. I just like to use this to kind of pat over my whole face once I put on the foundation to pick up any extra product and just make sure that everything is nice and smooth and seamless. Cause sometimes brushes, even though they're really good, with liquid foundations, I do find that sometimes they tend to leave little streaks on your face and they take away from the airbrushed beautiful finish that we're looking for. So this is just a secondary thing I like to do. If you really want to, you could skip this step, but I like to do it. I always do it. So this for me actually is a new product that I've been using lately that I've recently fallen in love with. And this is the Smashbox Color Correcting Stick. This is the light color, it's like the light peachy one. They have a darker peachy one for deeper skin tones, but I use the lighter one. I used to not use color correctors before, but I heard such good reviews about this one that I bought it and I tried it and I fall in love with it. And now I use it 
almost every single time I do my makeup and I use it on every single one of my clients and it's so easy to use and it blends out so nicely. It doesn't obstruct your concealer at all because that's an issue that I've had in the past that when I used color correctors, it would kind of make my concealer look different or break up my concealer or not blend well with the concealer and this one I've never had an issue with. So all I do is I put some right here in the darkest area of my eye or in my under eye I mean. And then I have a couple little veins here in my under eye, so I kind of just go right here where those little veins are, those beautiful little veins. And then I'll just take my fabulous sponge here and blend it out using little pressing motion. This blends out so easy and it's so creamy. I love it. And you can instantly see how brightening it is and what a good job it does at brightening that little area and getting rid of any of the darkness that you may have down there. So if you've watched my last two makeup tutorials, you know that I've been alternating between two different concealers. I'm still in love with the Tarte Rainforest of the Seas Concealer. I think this will forever be my favorite concealer. And I don't know why more people don't love it. It's just, to me, amazing. I love this concealer. Like, there's nothing like this to me. But I've also really, 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 really been loving the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. This is super duper duper full coverage, but it doesn't feel full coverage and it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It blends out like a dream. It barely creases. This is a really beautiful concealer. This is definitely a lot more lightweight. It does crease a little bit more if you don't set it because it's a liquid. It's not a cream. But they're just two very, very, very very different products. When I'm going for something super full coverage, I navigate towards the NARS concealer, but when I want something a little bit lighter, a little bit easier, a little bit more effortless. You love how I wear nine billion pounds of makeup and then I call it effortless. Like, am I even allowed to do that? That's when I go for this. I am gonna be honest though, I think it's because it's summer, it's hot, and thankfully my skin has been good to me lately and I really haven't been having a lot of breakouts. I have definitely been navigating more towards my Tarte concealer just because it's a little bit more lightweight, it's less coverage. And I just find that during the summer, I navigate more towards light coverage with a lot of dew. So since it's summer and that's what I've been doing more lately, that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna use this one. My makeup or foundation routine is constantly changing just depending on what kind of mood I'm in. Like some days I want really full coverage, some days I want lighter coverage, but today I'm showing you guys what I've been doing more often, which is definitely a little bit of a lighter coverage face makeup. I also really love the Sephora Gel Serum Concealer. This one's really, really, really nice. You saw that I used it in my beach makeup routine. It's a very light coverage, very soft um, concealer, and I love it. This is in the color Creme Caramel. It's a little bit of a deeper color. This is actually kind of like my skin color, so I love using this to conceal any blemishes on my face. But because I have a little bit of a tan right now, um, my concealer is a little bit too light for me, so I'm mixing in a couple dots of this Sephora one since it's darker. So then I like to use a brush to blend out my concealer as I always have. That's what I used to do before. In my last video, I showed this. Lately, I've been using the Morphe G1. I love this little brush, so I'll just press this into my skin as so. And you see how those two colors blend together and give me like the perfect concealer color? I don't always contour my nose, so bringing my concealer down the sides of my nose just helps to give a more slim effect to the nose without even actually having to contour it. So if you're scared to do a nose contour or you've done a nose contour in the past and it's been a disaster because it happens to all of us, it's happened to me, and you're scared to actually do a nose contour and then look crazy in pictures, just bring your concealer down the sides of your nose and that will make a huge difference without actually having to contour your nose. What it does is it gets rid of any of the shadow you would have here, so that's why it gives your nose the slimmer looking effect. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I blend on my concealer, I blend it out all down here first, and then I use whatever's left over on the brush to bring right into my under eye area. I put the least amount of product right in my under eye area. You wanna put the least amount of product right here where you tend to crease, because the less product you have in that area, the less product there is to crease in that area. So now that that's all blended out, I'll do the same thing with my beauty sponge as I did with my foundation. I'll just dab over everything, you know, dab. That was so stale. I'll just dab over everything to make sure that I pick up any extra product and then I blend anything out that didn't get blended out well with the brush. I'll especially make sure that I dab right in the under eye area because even though I put a very light amount of product, product just loves to get into the little lines in my under eye. So I like to go in with a sponge to pick up any extra product that may have already sunk into any of my little fine lines and just pull it on out of those little lines so we don't accentuate them even more. I also like to make sure that I get really good right here on my little nose area because I do tend to get a little cakey in this little 
crevices in there. So as you guys know, for a long time, I've had a love-hate relationship with Laura Mercier powder. Recently, I've been loving it. Again, look, there's Olivia. Olivia. And lately, I've really been loving it. I don't know if it's because it's been really humid and this helps with the oil breakout on my face or if I've just been taking better care of my skin and my skin isn't as dry as it used to be so it doesn't make my skin look dry and cracky. I don't know what it is, but I've really been liking the Laura Mercier powder so I have been using that for what I'm about to do. But I recently picked up the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. This is the second lightest one. It's color Fair Light Number 10. And I've been using it for like the last week and a half and I'm in love with it. It's amazing, it's so good. It's not translucent. As you know, Laura Mercier has a little bit of color to it, but this has a little bit more color. Definitely not a translucent powder, but it doesn't give flashback. Um, and this color just so happens to be perfect for my skin. I was just talking about it on Snapchat, but a lot of these powders, there's only six of them, they all have very strong pink undertones. This was the one that had the most yellowish undertone. It was like the least pink of them all. And it just so happens to be the perfect color for my skin tone. So I super duper love it. And it's from the drugstore. So I think it's $5.99. I think that's what I just saw online. $5.99 for a loose powder. Like that's amazing that the drugstore brought this out. So I just put a little bit on the cap right here. And I'm using another Real Technique sponge that Olivia ate the tip of. The sponge is wet, so you guys know. So what I like to do is first I'm going to buff out any extra product that may have already creased and then I take this with a very small amount of powder and I'm just going to press it in right here, right in my under eye area and down the side of my nose because that's where I tend to get oil. I also like to put some of the powder right here in this little area where I tend to have pores because I also get oil breakout right here. But you see how beautiful the color is, like how brightening it is? Like look at that. It's like the perfect yellowy brightening color. I also like to use just a tiny little bit right on my smile lines because even though I got them filled, I still have phobia of my smile lines getting all creasy. And I put a little tiny bit of this in the middle of my forehead too because I like to use my forehead and that tends to crease just a touch. But I am gonna use more cream products around my forehead area so I just put it right in the center. When I wanna look really, really, really dewy and kinda like more natural, I'll cream contour and not put any powder on top. When I know I'm gonna be at an event on there, I'm gonna be taking a lot of pictures, I'll cream contour and put powder on top. And sometimes I'll just powder contour. Like if I'm just going to dinner with Chris or I'm not really doing anything too crazy, I'll just powder contour to give my face a little bit of dimension. But in today's video, I will show you how I cream contour because I haven't really ever done a full in-depth demonstration, I guess, of how I cream contour, so let's do that. So a really good, really affordable cream contouring product that I love is the Maybelline Fit Me um, Foundation Stick. This is in the color 340, it's called Cappuccino. There is one shade darker than this one. Right now, this color is not dark enough for me to contour with. So even though I love this, another product that I really, really, really love to cream contour with that I use all the time, whether it be on myself or on my clients, is the Graftobian Warm Palette. I use this to contour my face a lot with because no matter what my skin color is, there's something within this palette for me to use to contour my face with. My favorite brush to lay down my contour with is this one from Morphe and it does not have a name on it. It doesn't have a number. I don't I don't know. It came in a Morphe Me package. I think it was like a special for only Morphe Me members. I will list here on the screen somewhere a brush from Morphe that is extremely, extremely, extremely similar, if not exactly the same. So I like to mix this color with this color. This color is super duper duper warm. And this one isn't as warm. So I like to mix the two together as so. And this brush is so small that it lets me make my perfect little lines. So I don't like to take my contour too far. I take my contour to kind of like the outer edge of my eye and that's it. Because when you start blending, if you bring, if you draw your line all the way almost to your mouth, it's going to look like you have a mustache when you start blending it out. So I like to keep it just on the outer edge. And I like to do a little bit of a curve to make my cheeks look a little bit more apple-y and a little bit more rounded and just like, I don't know, just cuter. If you like, if you have a round face and you want your face to look more structured, what you can do is just draw a straight line. So how I curved it like this, you would just draw a straight line without curving it. Okay, so now that we have those lines down, I'm going to do some on my forehead. I put the most amount of product on the outer edges of my forehead and then use whatever's left over on the brush right here in the middle. I don't put that much on the middle part of my forehead because it can start to look muddy and it can get taken down too far and it can make, I don't know, it makes my face look like a weird shape. So once I have my lines laid down, I like to switch over to my Morphe M436, which is just a small stifling brush. A lot of companies make these. MAC makes them, Sigma makes them, ELF has one. I prefer to use a stifling brush. I know in my last video I used a beauty blender. So I like to do little circular motions to blend this out. So as you can see, I'm blending the line out and then I lightly blend it upwards. 
And what I like to do is when I'm blending this out, I like to kind of do like the little no teeth smile like how you would do with blush. Because I like to bring a little bit up onto my cheekbones. If you don't blend it onto like the apples of your cheeks, you're going to stay with like this weird harsh line. So you always want to blend it up a little bit. And it just gives your skin, like as you can see, it's giving me like a nice bronzy glow to my face. As opposed to just being like a harsh line that stops right underneath of your cheek. You know what I mean? And then to blend out the forehead, I'll do the exact same thing. I start in the area where I put down the most product. And I really like to push it into my hairline. And then I blend out the middle piece last. And then of course, I like to pick up my blender and I like to just kind of go over everything and make sure it's nice and blended together and there is no excess product on my face. So once that's done, I like to go ahead and start highlighting. I'm gonna be using the MAC Strobe Cream in the color Gold Light. The first time I saw this was um, when Dusty Perkins started using it. I know that this is a product that's been out for a long time. I mean, it's from MAC, it's like an OG product, but I had never tried it before. I tried it um, and I loved it. Like I'm obsessed with it, I love it so much. So I put a little bit on my hand as so, and I like to use this little mini Real Techniques sponge. You don't have to use a mini sponge, just to me, I, my face is not that big. I know that's weird, but like I don't have a big face. So I like to use smaller products to really stay in the small areas of my face. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit on this sponge. I'm gonna turn my head. I'm gonna put some right here. I only keep it right here in this little area. I don't bring it all the way down to my cheekbone. I have a lot of pores and stuff down here and if I bring it down to where those pores are, all it does is accentuate the pores and make them stand out more, which I don't want to do. So as you can see, I'm just patting it right into the area where I want it and then I kind of blend around when there's less product on the sponge. Sometimes I'll leave a white product off the sponge before I start blending around. I also like to put some down the entire bridge of my nose, as so. And then I like to put some on my forehead too. I put it right over the arches of my eyebrows. If you wanna get that nice, like, all over glowy effect when you turn your face, you wanna put it right over the arch of your eyebrow and then bring it a little bit forward. Cause you see, like, that's how the light hits it. So now that we've got all of the cream products down, we're gonna start off with a little bit more powder. So you can totally skip this step if you want to, but if I ever feel like my contour got a little bit messy or I want it to look more sharp, I will go in with the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder to bake underneath of my contour. I know this is so extra, but I literally only use this powder to bake under my contour. I tried this powder in the under eye area. I did not like it. Um, you can totally set your whole face with this. It's nice to set your face, but my favorite thing to do with this is to cut the contour. It's just a little bit more lightweight than the Laura Mercier powder. And even though it's mattifying, it has like a nice like glow to it it's almost like if there's not shimmer inside of it but there's something inside of this powder that gives your skin like a nice healthy luminosity so it doesn't take away from the luminosity on your skin even though you're putting down a mattifying powder if that makes sense to you guys so i take a little bit on the back of my sponge and i'm just gonna carve out my cheekbone this sit for like literally maybe 10 to 15 seconds and then I'll just take a fluffy brush and wipe it away the longer you let it sit the more it's gonna cut your contour I like it to look more natural like I want it to look defined but natural so I don't let it sit for very long and as you can see that clean that up and it made my contour look a lot cleaner without making it look super harsh and sharp so sometimes I will leave my contour just like this I'll just add a little bit of blush and a little bit of powder highlight and call it a day but because I want to show you guys everything that I do. I'm gonna show you how I bronze up my skin even more after I contour with creams. So when I just powder contour, I like to use this brush from Japanesque. It's got like a nice tapered end, so it makes it really easy for me to define my cheekbone um, and keep it blended at the same time because the pointed edge will draw my nice um, defined line for my contour and then the little bristles around will blend it out very nicely. But when I have a cream contour that I want to set with powder, I like to use my Morphe M403 because when I'm setting my cream contour with powder, I don't use this swiping motion. I like to press it into the skin to kind of just set it and make, keep it looking airbrushed. Sometimes when you swipe over cream products, it can make it look kind of streaky and when you press in, it can make it look more airbrushed and this just does a better job of pressing product in than the Japanese brush does. So I'm gonna go on with my NARS Laguna powder. This is my favorite bronzer, I think, ever. I always navigate towards this bronzer. I also really love my e.l.f. bronzer palette. I use this sometimes too, but for today's video, I'm using Laguna. So I pick up some on my brush and I will just go very lightly over it. I put the most product up here 
and then when there's less product in the brush, I'll bring it down. And then using whatever's left over on the brush, I'll go over the top edges of the bronzer with barely any pressure and kind of just do little swirly motions to make sure that bronzer is nice and blended and it's not just like a harsh line. It's blended, you know what I mean? For my forehead, I'll just go ahead and press it in as so. And then I'll do a quick little run over on my whole face with whatever's left over on the brush. So even though my two favorite bronzers are definitely Laguna and the e.l.f. bronzer palette, which I don't think has changed since my last video, because I've been really, really, really tan lately and I've been getting a lot of sun, sometimes when I use Laguna, it's not warm enough. Laguna is like a very neutral bronzer. It's not really warm, it's not really cool, it's like a nice in between. So sometimes it's not warm enough for the amount of warmth my skin has because I've gotten so much sun. So what I'll do in those instances is I'll take a little bit of MAC Give Me Sun, which as you can see is extremely warm. It has like a really orangey undertone to it and I'll put a little bit of this on top of my Laguna bronzer um, if I need to add more warmth to the skin. But because I did my cream contour with such a warm contour color, there is enough warmth on my skin and I don't need to use the MAC Give Me Sun. So now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my skin and most definitely, by far 100%, my most used highlighter in like the last two months is definitely Laura Geller Gilded Honey. It's just, it's my go-to. I love it, I love it. So I'm using my Morphe M510 and I'm just gonna put this right on the highest points of my face to add even more glow than what's already there. As you can see, I'm keeping it very concentrated in certain areas because I have a nice all over glow happening from the cream product. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of the powder product right on top of the highest points of my face. So when I do this on my nose, I don't put it all the way down the bridge of my nose like I did with the cream product. I just put it on the tip of my nose and then I put it right here. I have talked about it before and get ready with me's on um, Instagram, but I don't have a perfectly straight nose. If you look at my nose from the side, I have a tiny little bit of a bump right here. It's not huge. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. But I do, I have like a little bit, it's not a huge bump. It's just like a little, a little imperfection, things that all of us have. So I don't like to accentuate that bump. If I put highlighter all over it, it's gonna make the bump stand out even more. So what I do is I put, Highlighter on the tip of my nose and then right here so that it brings this out and bring the tip of my nose out to give me a more straight nosed effect. Then I'll put a little bit right here over the brow bone. And that's pretty much it for the glow. Okay, so that's actually not it for the glow. I don't know how the heck I forgot this in this video, but I always highlight my cupid's bow and my chin also, just with the powder highlight, so you guys know. So I actually just recently picked up this NARS palette at the Nordstrom semi-annual sale, and I just loved it for traveling because it has Laguna, which is my favorite bronzer. It has that in here. It has four blushes and it has a highlight. This is the highlight in Hot Sands. I actually still haven't tried this. I used it as an inner corner highlight the other day and I loved it, but I haven't tried it on my face yet. So I'm very excited to try this out. But I'm gonna use one of these blushes. I've actually been really loving this blush right here. It's called Angel, Angel Pride 2 is what it is. It's the second one in the palette. And I've been using a Morphe M530 brush for my blush. This has been life changing for me. This is my favorite blush brush. Like it's amazing. So I do a little smile or so, and I'll put some right on the apples of my cheeks. And I love that this blush is kind of orangey and it gives like a really pretty kind of like, I don't know, it just looks so nice and like tropical. It looks like a Bahama Mama. So I start it right here on the apples of my cheeks and then work it up slightly. So I keep it right around here and then once I have enough product down, what and the brush doesn't have that much product left on it, I'll kind of fluff around the edges of the blush to make sure it's nice and blended. So once we've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and set my face. And I actually love to use the same Mario Badescu spray. I feel like it gets rid of all the powder on my face. And it kind of just makes everything look more like my skin. Then if I'm in the mood to be super duper duper dewy and luminous, I will use the Pixi Glow Mist also. But what I'll do is I'll cover kind of like this little area of my face right here because this is where I tend to get oil. So I'll cover around my nose and I'll just put it on the outer edges of my face. So like from here out, just not in my T-zone area. Cause again, this does have oil in it. So if I put oil on top of my oily spots, it just kind of makes my oil breakout happen faster and a little bit more intensely, which I do not want. And that is it for my face makeup. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my eyes, throw on some lipstick and I will be right back. Okay guys, so this is it. This is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth face routine. I will link my original in-depth face routine below. That one's a little bit more full coverage. I use more of a matte foundation. It's just a little bit different. 
Um, like I said in the beginning of this video, my technique hasn't changed that much. I've kind of just switched up my products a little bit. This is just more of how I've been doing my makeup lately, like over like the last two months. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you try out any of the products that I use in this video and you love them, comment on this video and let me know. Let me know through Instagram. I love chit chatting with you guys about makeup. And I think that is it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, then just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in my next video.